What's up, gang? It's your boy, Jodeci the Doberman, a.k.a. Jodeci the Coyote, and I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I know I am because this is, in fact, my first debut here on my channel. Yo, where's the applause y'all promised me? No, 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 that's the wrong way. Copyright, copyright. So I want to go ahead and give a shout out to my fellow fuzz butts that y'all have been seeing here on this lovely channel. I'm talking about my boy Tariq. Yeah, clap it up for him. My girl Brownie Pup. Oh, she's sexy. She, no, really, she, I mean, she looking good. And my boy Emil Wolfie Timberson. That's right. All these homies have been coming to you guys live and correct here in our studio, which is basically a house. Yeah, we don't have a studio yet, but I hope to grow this channel up enough that I can get myself my own studio to create more content for you guys. But because dreams do die hard, if you're not careful, I want to be a little careful with my channel so far, and I want to bring different content to you right now. I'm sure you guys are getting a little bit like fatigued of the things we've been doing. Although I would have to say unboxing videos and dancing videos, I mean, it's two of the best things all wrapped in one. And that's kind of why I wanted to start my channel that way because I just wanted to kind of show you guys that I'm a dancer fur while also I'm a typical furry. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like I am complete furry trash and that's the basis of this video today. If you haven't already, please smash that like button, go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell. Please ring that bell. That way you'll be notified of any content that I come out with and you know, you can be first and all that good stuff. For anybody that's first on my channel, for real, for real, I will give you guys some love and I might even do a little poll video for you guys to pick and choose what video you would like to do. And I do mean one individual, only one. I don't need everybody telling me what they want because for now it's a little bit shaky and rocky as far as like me being able to keep up. In my previous video that I posted here on this channel, I did let you guys know that I am a furry parent. So making videos is a little bit tough. So I mean, you legit have to be like the first person on my video in order to get the idea made. Now, that being said, suggestions are greatly appreciated. Even if you're not first, I would still love to hear some of y'all's suggestions in the comment section below. Let me know what videos you would like me to come out with. Give me a song to dance to. I love to dance, as you guys can see. Request a song, I'll dance to it. I'll do my best to make either a choreography or a freestyle, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just get into that. So, without further ado, Please sit back, relax, grab a snack, and let's get into this. As the title claims, How I Became Furry Trash. Now, it wasn't all particularly like, <sighs> I feel like I said that word wrong, but y'all, like, honestly, just thinking back, it wasn't all that weird to me. In fact, I would have to say it almost felt like I already was a furry before I was one. But YouTube is what helped me get there, so that's kind of, me starting a YouTube channel kind of feels surreal because I've been wanting to do YouTube since like 2006. So then you fast forward three years and it was like, yo, guess what else you got going on for yourself? Not only are you a future YouTuber, but you're a future furry, bruh. <laughs> the only way I found that out was based on the fact that at the time, the school I was going to, they didn't have a mascot costume, okay? They wanted one because they felt like their pep rallies needed more pep whatever that is in middle school. <laughs> so basically they were mentioning to me or well, all right, I'm guilty. I was mentioning to them why that they should make me their mascot when they finally decided to get a costume. News flash for me, right? It never happened. But anyway, I did myself a favor, went home, watched as many mascot auditioning videos as I could with the dream that it may happen one day. And in doing so, YouTube decided to be smart and say, hey, you're a furry without realizing it, bruh. Because out of nowhere, after watching a bunch of mascot audition videos and like just mascot content in general, that algorithm hit me up on the side like, yo, you ever heard of Anthrocon 2009? And I was like, no, bro, what is Anthrocon 2009? And then boom, there was Doryu, <laughs> there was Mosey, there was all them homies there, man. There was every single Dancer fur I could ever think of was on my screen. Fursuit parades as well, fursuit games, furry vlogs, furry channels, anything furry related just kind of like popped up on my screen right at that time, right? 
Now, mind you, 2009 was a very up and down year. Um, Michael Jackson died that year, so I was kind of, I was going through the emotions. And it really was like the light at the end of the tunnel once I found the furry fandom. So like right around the same time, because I did a little bit of research and I figured out that being a furry was gonna cost a lot of money as well as gonna be kind of like a shocker to my parents, I became a Michael Jackson impersonator and kind of filled in the gaps of entertainment by doing that while imagining myself doing a Michael Jackson routine at a dance competition, at a furry convention, it was all in my mind. It just, a lot of my furry lifestyle in the beginning was just imagining things and putting it on paper. <laughs> I remember I drew a picture for Adore You uh, for my boy V, not T guys, V. Back then we had V, okay? He was like the real deal. He was my favorite furry dancer at the time. And um, yeah, I miss him. I miss him dearly. I hope he's doing wonderful. I think the last I heard he's like in the military or something. And I think they said he like injured his back so he wasn't able to dance anymore. So he kind of gave it all up. But V, if you're out there, you are still loved, man. Honestly, and I I do believe that T, our boy T, 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 I believe that he is definitely uh, hyping up the game and keeping that, 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 that flame going for you. Cause I, I feel a lot of folks in the beginning kind of got y'all mixed up, but anyway, Thank you so much, V, for uh, introducing me to something amazing. Because of him, I knew right then and there I wanted to join the furry dance competitions when I finally made it to a convention. So anyway, all the years passed as I was making like furry fan art of all these fur suitors and I was thinking like, oh yeah, I wanna go to Anthrocon, I wanna go to Furry Week in Atlanta, for the Confusion, I wanted to go to all them conventions. Never happened all the way up until 2017. I got my first fursuit that year, by the way. Now, this is a side note. You don't need a fursuit to be a furry. Remember that, kids. I'm not gonna make a video on it because it's pretty self-explanatory, but you really don't have to be. And in fact, you don't even have to tell your parents unless you're just that anxious about getting a fursuit. Because mind you, the entire time of me being a furry, I never told my mom. She saw me watching furry content, like just mainly the dance competitions, cause she saw I was like obsessed with watching people in big animal costumes dancing. That's all she considered it as though. She never asked any further questions. Maybe she already knew what a furry was and she was just afraid to accept that that might be what was happening. <laughs> or perhaps she just didn't care. I think a lot of times we overthink what our parents may care about us getting into. Um, being a furry is really not something that needs to be told. I, I really don't think it is. My mom still to this day has no idea that the conventions I went to were furry related. She thinks they were just another Comic-Con cosplay act. <laughs> she thinks that I, I just like wearing animal costumes because I'm weird. Like she never really got into like, what are you? What are you doing? Why are you wasting thousands on animal costumes? Yeah, she don't even know that part. Now that part, I definitely, uh, oh yeah, shh. <laughs> no one needs to know how much money we spend on these things. Can I just be honest with you? I feel being a furry, as expensive as it is, it's worth it. Like, I, I'm sorry, I will, I'm not ashamed. If somebody asked me how much I spent on fursuits and I told them and they tried to drag me through the mud, like literally take me through the Wendy's parking lot by my left ear and like just drag me all the way to like McDonald's and be like, bro, this is what you should be eating from now on because you broke. You're a broke bitch. I'd be like, you're right, I am broke. But McDonald's, they ain't even got no dollar menu. And Dollar Tree ain't even the Dollar Tree no more. <laughs> so it's like, it don't matter. I'm just living my best life. Let me buy my thousand dollar fursuits and eat my $10 meals because baby, I'm living my best life. Being a furry, that's what it's about. I enjoyed being a furry my entire life, man. I have nothing bad to say about it. In the comment section below, let me know how many times I said furry in this channel because I feel like not just on this channel, but in this video. <laughs> like I, I, I really think so far I've said it a lot, but maybe not. Just in this video alone, I do believe I said it too much. So I'm gonna try my best to continue the video without saying it. But anyway, it has been a breath of fresh air for me. I didn't get my first fursuit, like I said, until 2017. My first convention was Furry Week in Atlanta, 2017 that furry doesn't count oh my gosh shut up anyway <laughs> yeah um that was a lit convention bro like fwa is lit bro like i i'm sorry it it was at the time my favorite convention i will say it was because a couple years later i went to fwa 2019 and it still was lit 
I actually was able to take a couple friends with me at the time. None of them were furries. Uh, they were just kind of interested in like cosplay and stuff like that, like I was. They liked different stuff and they wanted to do a one weekend of just fun. And I told them, well, a furry convention is fun. So they went, they saw, they liked it a little bit. I don't think they're furries to this day, but I don't think they judged me at all. They uh, were all kind of weird in their own way. I do not advise doing that though. If you have a friend and they're not a furry, you do not, don't get the idea that they will just be okay with going to a convention with you, okay? Just kind of ease it in there, but if they kind of are apprehensive, let them have their apprehensive attitude and hesitate because they will be missing out at the end of the day, but let them do their own research first. Don't just drag them along. I think I made the mistake of assuming that my friends would just love it right off the bat. At first they were a little bit hesitant, but once they got comfortable, they actually liked it because like I said, they were weird in their own ways. They just enjoyed the music of it. They enjoyed seeing the different things and aspects and they realized that it wasn't all that bad because it isn't. <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, FWA was fun. Um, it's still fun, but I have to admit it's the only convention I've been to besides Megaplex. And I've only been to Megaplex once. I went to Megaplex in 2019. And um, the things that were special about those conventions that year, 2019, was that I was in the dance competition at FWA 2019, as well as their Floor Wars Battle Royale at Megaplex 2019. Um, yeah, that was, that was the highlight of my trip. Because I have to admit, doing the dance comp, <laughs> it took up most of my convention time. Like, behind auditioning and literally, like, trying to practice my routine and having to do like roll calls and like getting prepared for the show and then doing the show and all that like the dance competition it takes a lot of your time besides volunteering i think volunteering is the one thing that takes the most but like yeah um it's fun and all but i think unless you like really are gung-ho about doing it you probably won't enjoy your con that much because you will have more time focusing on whether or not you gonna win that thing. It's not about winning, but it is a nice thought to like polish your dance and really focus on your dance and know like you're about to go in front of thousands of furries, both at home and at the con, and they're gonna be watching you and you hope you don't fall on your face or anything. <laughs> like that's a real deal. So anyway, yeah, that was it. That was what made it fun for me. But the only reason why I'm saying FWA was like my favorite was because I still have other conventions to eventually go to. So I hope to get the chance to do that. So far this year, I plan on only going to Megaplex. I unfortunately do not have the ability to go to anything else because I number one, don't have any reservations and I don't have any furry friends around me presently <laughs> to go to any convention so I kind of have to go to the one that's closest to me. I mean technically between FWA and Megaplex, FWA is closer but as far as like the time frame goes I don't have the time off from work and I'm not gonna go begging because um it never works. We already know how the corporate world is. They hate us. So anyway thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Um I will make a part two to this video eventually describing how I became moi and where Jodeci the Coyote, the name of my channel that is, came from and why I decided to choose that and why this is going to be the official face of this channel. Um, yeah, I, I, I do plan on making a video about that later. But for now, I'm signing off. I want to give my love and hugs to all my subscribers. Again, thank y'all so much for checking out this video. Smash that like button before you leave and I will catch you next time. Bye!